Heritage Audio would just like to mention that we are in no way associated with Mike Watts, nor Voodoo Studios, nor have sponsored this video. We have not participated in its production, nor have influenced their opinions. We were just very impressed with the results and wanted to share them with you. Please enjoy. Hey, how are you? We are back here at Voodoo Studios, Long Island, New York, Port Jefferson. I'm here with my partner, Frank Materatona. And I am Mike Watts, and we are here today to discuss three Pultec style EQs. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what Pultec style EQ is, it's basically a two band EQ, that's it. It will give some sort of bottom end and some sort of top end, meaning low frequencies and high frequencies. And what these EQs will give you is the ability to add and subtract EQ from the bottom and the top. You can either do it with a very sharp bandwidth or narrow or a broad or wide bandwidth. This type of EQ is called a resonant frequency EQ where you get to do what they call push-pull type of thing. Each one of these offers different uh, characteristics on your music. The one that originally came out obviously is the Pultec and that's what Everybody is kind of trying to emulate. The Pultec has a tube, correct, in it, and so does the Warm, Warm Audio iteration, the EQPWA, and I believe the um, Heritage, which is based on a Lang EQ, the PEQ2, has uh, transformers in it. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah, transformer in and out and inductors. All the solid state components are the same as the original Pultec. I'd say the solid state Pultecs have been pretty popular in music and mixing, recording almost as long as the tube based ones. So there's lots of people that favor the solid state Pultex. That info, I don't know. I just turn shit. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're here to run different sound sources through that have been pre-recorded. Uh, these tracks were recorded down in uh, Nashville with some pretty great musicians. Uh, it's a song from an artist uh, called Natalie Ann and she's allowed us to use her song here uh, these are very raw tracks. No mixing has been done on this. We literally just spent five minutes throwing up faders to get a rough mix on it. Unfortunately, we don't have a stereo pair of any of these, so we're going to have to run a mono signal in. But uh, one of the applications for these EQs is to strap them across your, your mix, your entire mix, your two mix. So we're going to play first, which we usually do last, but since we just got to balance, I think we'll do it first. We're gonna run the entire mix through in mono through each one of these and see how they react. Uh, we've set them as close to zero or unity gain from each other so there's no volume jump and you won't get excited like, wow, that one's better than the other because it's louder because that can play tricks on all of us, especially with EQ type of uh, programming. So we will, again, run each one of these individually through and let you hear what each one of these do. They're all set roughly to where they're adding the same amount of what we would consider mix bus type of EQ. The usual favorite for this sort of thing is to boost some sort of low end, usually 60 or 100 hertz would be the selection. And then the top end would usually be 8,000 or 10,000 hertz. And what you would do is boost a little bit of that into your mix and then subtract just a hair from your mix. And the same with the top end. Usually you don't take too much of the top end away because these EQs are very broad sounding. They're not very narrow and surgical. They're broad, so they, they add like that happy smiley face to your mix. Uh, as you can see on all three of these, we are not cutting any top end. And we are adding a little bit of 60 hertz, because that's my personal favorite, uh, to all three of them. So the first one we're going to do is play you the mix with no EQ. Then we will play the Pultec, and we will play the Heritage Lang, and then we will play the Warm Audio. So here is the In The Box mix. I was doing fine all alone. Now, halfway through this, I'm just going to run through and throw the Pultec in. And then I'll turn it off, and then I'll put it back in. So you can hear the difference it's making throughout this. And I'll nod when it's happening. Go ahead. I was doing fine all alone. No one answered to you. Till it comes creeping up, slap 
Okay, so you can hear clearly as I was switching back and forth what it does, which is why, I mean, immediately, and this, this is literally a five minute mix and it excites me putting it on and it, it's not really louder. It just sounds sweeter, better, more musical. The top end is just gorgeous, airy. The bottom end is round, warm and punchy. I am attenuating a dB of 60 out. I'm adding 2 dB of 60 hertz. And we'll go through multiple instruments individually with you, but I just wanted to let you hear what that sounds like. Now we're going to do the Lang or the Heritage iteration of Lang, which is a solid state version of the, of the Poltec. So here we go. Same, same experiment. Out first. I was doing fine all along. Well, that sounded really good too. Uh, and that's the Heritage Lang or um, solid state iteration of a Pultec. Now we're going to do the warm. Same exact experiment. Out first. I was doing fine all alone. No one answered to you. Well, I noticed I kind of had to make some adjustments along the way in order to make the warm kind of match what the Pultec and the Heritage audio are doing. They all sound good. They're all going to work on a two mix. You're not going to be suffering when you put these on your two mix. Uh, the Lang sounded really close, in my opinion, to the uh, original Pultec on the overall mix. The warm sounded good, just slightly different. Uh, I'm going to just play a quick iteration of the verse here uh, and add top end with the Pultec and then the uh, Heritage and then the Warm just to hear what the top end does to these mixes as I'm sweeping that 10K. Okay, just here's the Pultec first, original Pultec. I was doing fine all alone. Okay, that's adding what it says 9 dB of 10K and it sounds glorious. <laughs> it's not breaking up at all. It just sounds more and more airy. The vocals come front, the uh, cymbals come up front, the guitars sound nice and shimmery, the acoustics. We're going to do the same thing with the Lang Heritage iteration of Lang. Same exact thing. Out first. I was doing fine all alone. In. Wow, uh, same thing, adding, uh, it doesn't have a numerical value, so we'll call it lots of, but it looks like it's the same, about like eight and a half, nine dB of, they have it at 10K. 
and uh, the air and the gloss is just beautiful on both of these units. Um, really impressed with the heritage right now uh, with what it's doing. It, it sounds tight. The bottom end is a little tighter than the, than the pull tech itself. The pull tech is warm and round. This is warm, but it, the bottom seems really focused and tight to me, in my opinion. Uh, let's try the warm audio right now. Uh, off first, 10K, and we're going to add boost. I was doing fine all alone. Well, the top end, in my opinion, isn't as sweet. I hear a little kind of trashiness around the five, six thousand hertz. That's not as glossy. It sounds a little harsh and ganky up there. I wouldn't push this EQ to the eight and a half level on top end. It's not as flattering, in my opinion. It did sound better lower, but if you need to add that top end, know that it won't sound <laughs> as flattering on this particular unit, in my opinion. And I'm not, you know, I own these, so, and I use them all the time, and and they're great tools, but uh, I'm real Poltec sitting here, and now I own this Heritage, and we've been leaning on the Heritage quite a bit just because the top end is, is stunning. Yeah. yeah, I put it on just about every overdub that lives on snare, the top end, the low end, extremely powerful, but focused. You can crank these and never feel like you're muddying things up makes things sound huge beautiful and i really notice the sparkle on top is the same regardless of where you've got that shelf placed when you crank it it just opens up and that's the magical part about it when that frequency pushes into the transformer and it just makes it sound sweet you don't ever get punished and that's a great thing i think that's the beauty of the original pull tech too is the top end is airy and stunning i've always had issues with the low end in pull tech it's good to leave it on kind of subtly and at a certain certain position but when you start pushing a little too much bottom it gets uh, a little too wide and a little too tubby then you start attenuating and then you lose that bottom end a, you know a little too much it's always a very fine uh, line to find the happiness in there when you do it's it's spectacular I notice that this is a little more forgiving in the low end the heritage in that it, it's just a little bit of a tighter base uh, there is one EQ on the warm that we always love and it's 800 hertz I just want to make mention that because we track a lot of guitars here at the studio and 800 seems to take the guitars and really push them forward and that's a real strong attribute of warm just to show you I'm not here you know loving anything specifically i'm just stating facts of how each one of these shines so far of the use of what the pull tech is used for these two sound very much like what you would expect out of these units so now we're going to go into visual stuff uh first thing you would normally want to use a pull tech on from ground up is the bass drum or the kick drum so we'll solo kick drums we'll do really quick won't be that long like this and we'll do you know a couple of measures of bass drums and we'll add what we would think would be the right eq on a kick drum now i've dialed up what i think sounds good on the pull tech which is about eight and a half db of 8k and 4 dB of 60 hertz just on this particular sound source. I'm not attenuating much of anything, maybe 1 dB of 60 hertz. Here's out. Wow, uh, that's really <laughs> amazing. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to match it here. Four. Uh, I'm going to change that to that. And do, let's see. Let's see what happens. Here is the Heritage Lang PEQ2. Out.
strikingly similar. A uh, little over 4 dB of 60 hertz, very little uh, attenuation, and adding same thing, over 8 dB of, this has 7.5K, but again, it's very broad band, so I'm hitting just top end, just starting around 7.5 and then shuffling up high. So let's do the same thing with the warm. Let's add 4 dB of 60 hertz, a little bit of attenuation, broadband, and we're going to do 8.5 dB of 8K. Here we go. Off first. Warm audio. On an individual sound source, the warm sounded substantially better than it did on the entire mix. All of them sounded really, really good in my opinion. Uh, you can definitely feel the, the bottom end coming to life in all three. Uh, the top end did sound just a tad sweeter in the original Pultec and in the Heritage. But the warm, I was expecting it to kind of sound crunchy in class, but it didn't. It sounded really good on the individual kick drum, if I have to be honest. All three of these, very, very effective on bass drum. I would use them all on bass drum, absolutely. I'm going to do snare drum, and we've added uh, just an enormous amount of 100 hertz for the meat. And we've added 7.5 dB of 8K. So this is 100 hertz we're adding, and 8 thousand hertz we're adding for snare drum it's to give the meat of the drum and the crack of the drum another smiley face here's a, a off and then pull tech first oh, wow Okay, on the pull tech, uh, the bottom end is really nice. It doesn't seem like it sucks any frequencies out of the, of the snare or the sound source. It just sounds like it's adding meat to the bottom and really nice air on top. Let's try the Heritage uh, PEQ2. Yeah, um, Heritage Lang sounds great. Uh, the top end is excellent. I think the Pultec top end was a hair smoother. The bottom end of the Heritage, the punch, the focus of that thrust of the snare just, just like hit me right in the chest. That was really, really yeah. good. Um, is that what you're feeling too? Yeah, that's that's where it lives too on my tracking. You can you can crank sixty and do it reliably. Lean into those really well made switches and just turn the knob until it sounds good. It's unbelievable. Really, really good focus. Low end on these. Top end is no slouch. It sounds great. Really great. I just that the thrust that it gave me on on the kick drum and the snare so far uh, has been outstanding on the heritage. Let's try the one off first. I mean, it's definitely adding more EQ. Uh, I personally like the bottom end of the warm on the snare. Top sounds a little papery, like I'm hearing it change the mids is that what yeah, there's a little bit of a, a pish or a pinchiness to it in yeah the upper mids like the five five six k area just sounds a little paper to me it's not adding the upper top gloss or that beautiful gloss that these other two add uh the bottom on this sounds pretty good though 
on the warm. It, it's no slouch and it, you know, it sounds wonderful. You might be able to manipulate this back a little bit and not add as much as these other two. But I mean, that's kind of the idea is these things that you can crank them a little bit and get that open airiness to it, um, I guess, you know, but uh, n again, none of them are bad. They're all sound really good and you can, you're not gonna lose by buying any of these. That's for sure. If you can afford the pull tech, I, I can. <laughs> so uh, now we're gonna go to dun, 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 the one that pull tech is really known for, bass guitar. Uh, normally, personally, I would go for 100 hertz. You could go for 60 or 80 or whatever any one of these EQs allows. Uh, on the Heritage uh, PEQ2, they didn't have 100. They had a choice between 80 and 120, so I opted for 120. As I was sweeping through, I thought 120 was more, not just appropriate, but more equal to the 100 hertz on the Warm and the original Pultec. So uh, normally what I do on this when I'm mixing, I literally go to 3K on all of them at 3000 hertz, and I just stun it. I crank it up basically all I can just to get a little air. If it gets too airy, I can attenuate back. This particular bass was played by fingers. It was a P bass done in Nashville. We were really going for a big old fat warm bass sound. So it's not a pick grindy bass sound you'll notice. So the tons of 3K is going to help bring a little more focus to the part itself. And once you add all the other instruments in, trust me, this will get swallowed up very quickly. It really will help with the articulation of the part. So uh, we will do pull tech first, out, and then I'll pop it in as we go. Um, all three sound really good to me. What's your opinion on those? What did you hear about the difference? They all sounded different. To yeah, me. they all kind of do the thing, but uh, with the really extreme instruments, the really frequency spectrum defining instruments, I heard that airiness in the top end wasn't quite there in the warm, and I also kind of heard that sub extension wasn't there, even though the frequency was set lower. The Heritage Lang had that sub extension that I got from the Poltec. So they all kind of gave that bigness to it, but as far as making you be more precise when you mix, the, the first two were a little more forgiving. I would say the same thing. Each one added the, the top end I was looking for, the, the, the grab of the strings. I could hear it on all three. I did like the Heritage Lang quite a bit on how it was articulating. Uh, it doesn't have 3K, it has 2.5. Maybe that's why I liked it better because normally I boost like one or 2,000 hertz for that sort of thing. But I always have a Pultec on my bass as a plug-in and normally I do go to three and crank it and then add another form of mid-range EQ. But I guess because, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, Heritage uh, PEQ2 has 2.5, maybe it's closer to what I'm looking for. But either way, all three of them did a really nice job. Uh, definitely a little more focused subharmonics from the Poltec and the Heritage. Uh, now we're going to do guitars real quick. This is something that would definitely go on acoustic guitars. Uh, normally I would add a little body to it. 
100 hertz. I would attenuate that though, pulling some of it back, trying to gain some focus on that sort of thing. Um, I would do a very broad bandwidth and then I would add some top end, usually around eight or 10K. I'm gonna go with 8K and on the Heritage uh, PEQ2, I'm gonna do 7.5K and on the Warm EQ PWA, I'm gonna do 8K because they had it. I'm adding about six and three quarters dB, almost seven dB of the top end and I'm adding about two and a half dB of low end on all three. Let's see how they sound. Pull tech first, off, Coos guitar. Can hear right away it just brings the acoustic guitar to life really adds to the body of the guitar on the bottom end and the shimmer the top is just stunning on the original Pultec let's try this heritage Lang Strikingly similar results uh, from that to the Pultec, same type of <coughs> air on the top end. I felt just a hair more push in the bottom end on the Pultec, but I could easily just add more here to match that. Um, I am adding 80 hertz on the bottom end of this. Maybe I could switch to 120 and get a little more focused. I thought 80 sounded better on the Heritage. Uh, but let's go with the warm and see what that does now. Same thing, uh, doing 100 hertz of a little over two, 8K, uh, six and a half dB, almost seven dB. Here we go, warm audio off. Uh, just based on the amount of dB I'm adding to these, this one sounds substantially brighter and maybe they were trying to make it easier to get to the top end on this unit, I'm not sure. But it is certainly not calibrated close to the other two units. The warm definitely has a, a brighter high mid-range thing it's adding. And I'm sure that can work for certain sound sources, but I mean, we're going to switch over to electric guitars right now. I'm going to keep the frequencies the same and just do it. I'm just not going to add as... I'm going to uh, switch the top end actually to like 3K again. And add 5 dB, which is normally what I would do. 100 hertz. Yep. We're going to do electric guitars now. Here we go. Pull tech out. Let's do the uh, heritage. I quite like that. Again, it doesn't have <laughs> 3K, it's got 2.5, so maybe that's why I like it. Uh, really brought the uh, electrics to focus. Let's try the, the uh, warm, just on those frequencies. Here we go.
little too crunchy on the top. I wouldn't dial that much in. I would pull it back. It does very different things than what it's supposed to do with the with the two band EQ. And uh, it's very usable. I, I have two of them, so I'm not gonna sit here and say I don't use them every day because we do. But since we got this heritage, this has been the more of the go-to uh, EQ. Okay, we're gonna do vocals. Uh, this is a scratch vocal, so there's just a hair of leakage, but you'll get the idea of uh, frequency we're pushing. Normally, because there isn't anything higher on the frequency spectrum, I'm adding 100, but I would normally do that just for a little bit of, of uh, body, but I will attenuate a little more, creating that resonant frequency. Uh, so I'm pulling back 2 dB of 100 hertz on all these. On the Heritage, I had to do, uh, what is it? Oh, it is 100, cool. And no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm pulling back 100 here, but I'm boosting 120. On the other two, you're pushing and pulling the same exact frequency. On this one, you get to choose different frequencies. It's really nice. Uh, I haven't really attenuated any top end much on, on any of these sound sources, so I, I don't plan on doing that. Um, so on the original Pultec, we decided at six and a half, roughly, dB of boost at 10K. On the Heritage, I chose 10K because we had it. And same thing on the Warm, we all have 10K. So boosting 100 on all three and adding 10K on all three. Six and a half dB. We're attenuating 2 dB of 100 roughly on all of them. Uh, we've moved the vocals much closer together so you didn't have to wait in the gap of music. So they're going to run one right after the other. Uh, pull tech first. I was doing fine all alone. No one answered to waiting at home. I gave up on the swore it does nothing but end up in pain. Do that again. I'll leave it in now. I was doing fine all alone. No one answered to waiting at home. I gave up on the swore it does nothing but end up in pain. Now we'll do the Heritage, PEQ2, out first. I was doing fine all alone. No one answered to waiting at home. I gave up on the swore it does nothing but end up in pain. Again, all in this time. I was doing fine all alone. No one answered to waiting at home. I gave up on the swore it does nothing but end up in pain. Just the top end, the air on the air on both of these just sounds glorious. Just such a compliment to the vocal and every other sound source so far. Now we're gonna do the warm. Same thing, off first and then in. Same settings as the other two. I was doing fine all alone. No one answered to waiting at home. I gave up on the swore it does nothing but end up in pain. Play them all again. All in now for the warm. I was doing fine all alone. No one answered to waiting at home. I gave up on the swore it does nothing but end up in pain. I play the warm one more time. I'm just going to pull back a bunch of dBs on the top end because it just sounds uh, trashy up there. Go ahead. I was doing fine all alone. No one answered to waiting at home. I gave up on the swore it does nothing but end up in pain. Okay. And that was it on vocals. Um, and Frank, what was your interpretation? Honestly, I'm tired of listening to my <laughs> listen to me chat all the time, and you got a better perspective in the speakers. Yeah, personally, I don't want to be too surgical when I'm using a broadband EQ. It should require a lot of thought. You should be able to put something through, and it should make it sound nicer. And I find that the very open top end and, and really big bottom uh, on the Pultec and the uh, Heritage Lang PEQ2 was very open and very broadband sounding and I felt like we just had to be a little bit more surgical and careful about where we placed our frequency choices on the warm. They all do the big thing, but uh, I really like them on the uh, overall picture and on the uh, 
the ultra high and ultra low stuff, the, the Lang Heritage and the Poltec. What he said. Seriously, I had the exact same uh, opinion and sentiment on all three of these. I know there are other clones out there, but these uh, seem to be the most popular. I pay attention to this Heritage EQ because I know it's probably 25% of the price of the Poltec, you know, and you're getting 95% of the EQP on AI, I would think. And the only difference, it's not even sonically, it's more EQ choices. Um, and, you know, it's not tube, which means it might not be as uh, wide or fluffy or tubby in the low end. It's, I notice the focus on the bottom on the Heritage uh, PEQ2 is just spectacular. Really thrusty and punchy in the kick, bass, snare, vocals, everything. The bottom end was just wonderful. Uh, so th there you have it. Um, it's from us here at uh, Voodoo Studios. Thanks to everybody, and thanks for always asking us to put our silly opinions on this stuff that is, again, just opinions. You have to sit and listen to yourselves, but uh, enjoy.